Hi everyone, it's Ben from Trek It, and we're out here looking over the beautiful Three Cliffs Bay behind us. We've got Harry behind the camera as always. And in today's Inside Look video, we're going to go over the Primus Mimer stove. Over the course of this video, we'll go through what it is, what it does, and a few features of it that we think are so great about it. So stay tuned to learn a little bit more about this cool little stove. First and foremost, what is the Mimer? Well, the Mimer is just a very basic, but well put together camping backpacking stove. So it's got no moving parts in it, and it's designed to be used for camping, hiking, backpacking, but also just as well suited as that extra burner for a camper van or just as that emergency thing that you keep around the house. It's a design that came out originally in the 80s and they haven't really changed it since. So there's no moving parts on it beyond an adjuster on the side here to actually adjust the amount of flame. So you can use this with a little bit of simmer control and it does break down into two sections. So you can take the regulator, you can take the small regulator off, we'll unscrew eventually. And that is then your stove broken down there. So no real moving parts. There's no piezo or anything like that. So you will need an ignition source, but it is just designed to be as simple as possible, which also makes it pretty bomb proof. It's the sort of thing that you could see grabbing and sort of using for years and years and years and not really having to think about because there's so few parts on it, it's just really simple to use. Helping along with the Mimer being bomb-proof, lightweight, quite small, is the fact that it comes in at 25 pounds. So it's, it's a really easy stove to, to acquire, and it's the sort of stove that will just last a really long time. I should also mention that a stove like this runs on screw mount gas. Many brands are available in that regard, but Anything with that screw mount, whether it be a 100 gram canister like this, the bigger 230s or the even bigger 400s will all work with this and they simply just screw on and then you've got a more stable base to go. Talking of stability with this stove as well though, just put the gas back down on the floor there. This stove features a really wide pot support on it, which is just in a really simple cross, which means that you can actually use a wide variety of pots and, and things on this stove and it'll be nice and stable. That is an advantage that you have over some, some other stoves that will have a slightly smaller burner head. So think your MSR pocket rockets, things like that, which will have a much smaller burner than this, but it also means that their pot support is smaller. So you get a little bit less stability from a stove like that, but it is a smaller pack size, whereas something like this, put pretty much any pot on it and it will work. So it seemed a little bit silly to bring a stove all the way out here, somewhere as beautiful as this, and talk about it, but not actually use it. So there will be a bit of a demo. We're gonna be brewing up some coffee this morning. Got a little mocha pot and we went to the local store to make sure that we got some geographically appropriate coffee. So we've got some Gower coffee and it is the three, ugh, I can't even say that, Three Cliffs Bay blend. So we're gonna give that a go in our mocha pot. I must mention that I'm really not James Hoffman and uh, this is by no means a video on how to make coffee well. This may taste awful. I'm not saying this coffee will taste awful. I'm sure this is lovely. But the way that I brew it here may not be the best, but we are out on a cliff, so we'll see what we can do. If it's bad, I'll make Harry drink it. So the mocha pot's done its work. We have a lovely little bit of coffee in there. We've turned the stove off now as well. But we're gonna try the coffee and see what it tastes like. We had another coffee this morning, so this is only a little one, hence the little mocha pot. But it smells like coffee, looks like coffee. Let's find out. It's actually very nice, it's quite fruity. As a side note, we can now recommend Gower Coffee. If you happen to be in the area, the Three Cliffs Bay Blend is rather nice. But it's not just coffee that you can make with this. Get an appropriate pan and you have the ability to cook more formal meals. So you could use quite a large pan on it to cook full meals. Or what's more likely to happen from a backpacking sense is you would pack something like this with you as well. These are just some of the examples of 
both wet and dry food that we stock in the shop from Blarband. Um, we do also stock a few others from Fire Pots and um, Expedition Foods and a, and a few others. But essentially you've either got a dehydrated meal, which you'd be boiling water for, which this pot is, this stove is ideal for, and then pouring directly into this and then eating that. This one might be lunch later, a nice couscous with chili and spiced vegetables. Or if you have a slightly bigger pot, you can either boil this in the bag, so going over to wet food, that's gonna be a little bit heavier for you, or you can cook this directly into the pot if you have cleaning facilities. But this stove is just really adaptable, but it's also very, very simple. So it's a sort of stove that's just gonna last forever. It could be great for DV users, people that are just looking for that secondary burner or their first burner for the outdoors, or they just want something that's gonna just be ridiculously reliable no matter where you go. As long as you've got access to gas, you'll be able to use something like this and it will work very well. That's all there really is to it. It's just a stove that works very well. That about wraps up our look into the Primus Mimer stove. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about it, there'll be a link on the screen somewhere now that Harry's gonna pop up there. We would also appreciate if you took a look at our five pound cooking challenge video, just to give you an idea of what's capable with a budget in mind for cooking in the outdoors. As always, if you'd like to comment down below with anything you'd like to see from us, any questions you have, anything like that, we always really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna go and enjoy my coffee with a view. That way. <laughs>